I can imagine that you have some questions like, did I stop polishing my nails? Did this video get a 100 comment for the algorithm? Is there a reason why my lights are pink? And did two plugin developers just make the same plugin and release it on the same date? Well, let's find out. All right, so I don't know if this is coincidence or not, but Sonable and Isotope both have released their own spectral balance plugin. It, it's kind of like an analyzer. And I don't make a secret out of the fact that I'm a huge Sonable fan. I'm actually using a lot of Sonable plugins in my day-to-day -day workflow because using Sonable plugins really feels like you're, you're having an extra hand, an extra assistant that dials in the first settings that, that really creates a starting point for you. On the other hand, Isotope is doing the same thing. I, I'm not using Isotope plugins. There's no particular reason for me not using the mixing mastering bundle from Isotope. It's just that, you know, I like to use FabFilter and Sonable. I mean, I mean, there's no reason for me to also use uh, Isotope then. And I think that Isotope is very competitive as well in this AI learning plugins, automatic mastering, wh whatever market it is called, uh, I think Isotope is very competitive and Sonable is very competitive as well, which makes this even more interesting, especially because of the fact that both the embargoes for Audio Lens and True Balance lift at this roughly the same moment. <laughs> I, I really want to compare these two because they are priced exactly the same. Apart from intro discounts or whatever, they both cost 100 euros as far as I know. Links will be in the description down below. You can check out yourself what the price will be at this moment. Black Friday deals, whatever. But but I really find it interesting to see, you know, what value is where. Now, I want to start with Audio Lens. This is Audio Lens. And what is cool about Audio Lens is that it's not a plugin. Audio Lens is a separated app. But the benefit of that is that I can just, you know, play back something from a streaming service or whatever. And I can capture that in Audio Lens. Now, let me mute the output because this is all copyrighted music. By the way, this song was mastered by me. So le let's see what, what it says on the target here. But anyway, it can listen to this and create a reference from there. So if there's a track on your favorite streaming service that you really want to use as a reference, you can just capture that pretty easily with Audio Lens. And I think they're not capturing the audio. They're just capturing the spectral balance of that track. So I've just captured the, the whole the whole song, the whole autumn song. It, it's quite an acoustic song with some bass drums going on. So you can see <laughs> there's a lot of range in here, but it really creates like the curve and, and you know, creates my target. And, if, and I'll play back a song, a funk song in this case, but it doesn't matter for the demo. I can now see like, hey, where am I hitting my target and where am I not hitting my target? Now, one of the things that I'm already wondering right now is, can I, can, can I, can, can I see the, the frequency? Like, like I, I know that Isotope likes to simplify things, but this is so simplified that I just don't know what they're talking about anymore. Is this linear, logarithmic? What is going on? Which frequency is this? What, what, what's this bump? Um, I don't know. It's a bit guessing. What it does do, you can see it here, it shows when something is on the target and when it's not on the target. Also, it's level independent. I've just turned down the level by 11 decibels and it still stays in the same uh, range. It's not like, hey, everything is out of balance now. It can really handle the different levels, which is really cool. Now, because this is from Isotope, you can use the captures that you made in their other plugins, Neutron and Ozone. Let's capture Kiss from Prince. And, and let's see if we can use this spectral balance on Sandstorm from Darude. All right, so this is the capture from KISS. You can see that there's a lot less variability in this one, so that's good. Let's build the master chain for that. Ah, oh, that's nice. I mean... I mean, I mean, that works, that works. So if you want to sound like somebody else, you can use the combination of like Audio Lens and, and Ozone. Of course, I know that this is not made to sound like somebody else. It's really 
to get you pointed in the right direction. Now, speaking of that, I also want to check out the True Balance from uh, Sonable. This already looks looks different, but uh, looks also a little bit of the same. Uh, Sonable comes with uh, a lot of uh, built-in presets. It could be that the audio lens comes with presets as well that are not in there right now because it's not the final version that I'm running. Could be. I don't know. Sonable uses AI. Uh, I want to make a separate video about AI and audio soon, so stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe. But they use AI to, to train their software. I've got a lot of questions about like, oh, what do you train it with and stuff. But there are presets in here that you can use for your spectral reference. You can also import a reference track. For instance, this one. Anyway, I want to use the built-in presets for now. Let's do funk again. And let's see, let's see what it says here. So we're getting, I mean, I mean, at first we're getting the same analysis as uh, as in the as in the eyes though plugin. Like, like we've get, we got the spectral analysis here. Now, according to uh, Sonoball, there's too much low frequencies in there, a bit too little mid-high, and a bit too much high. But what is really cool is that Sonoball does talk audio engineering. <laughs> um, this is language that I can work with, like on my low frequencies, uh, everything below 200 hertz. Um, I've got too much, 10 decibels too much. Like, like this, this is the language that I've learned in school. The same here, it, like it talks dBs and hertz. It's like, like that's, <laughs> that's in the end what we're working with. What's also really cool is that apparently I'm able to uh, change the bands in here. Um, so I can also separate this analysis different. And it shows me uh, my stereo, my stereo, stereo, uh, stereo, <laughs> my stereo correlation and uh, width. Um, so it shows here that um, this track is uh, well, pretty mono in the low frequencies. When the horns come in, it gets wide. Uh, it shows that my polarity is correct. Also have a balance check. Oh, okay. So there it's guiding me into like, hey. Awesome. I like the wording that they're using here. You could reduce the level of the lows. It's not that you should. You could. I mean, you have to... You always have to take an analysis, whether it's an analysis like this, whether it's a plugin doctor analysis, whether it's it's whatever you're analyzing, you always have to take that analysis for what it's worth and, and you have to take the info from it that really is the info you need from it. Sometimes you can get blinded by analysis in the same way that you can get deaf by playing music too loud or mixing for too long, getting tired. So it's quite interesting, these two plugins. Like, they help you achieve the same thing, but both in their own way. And it's up to you to decide uh, what your way is. Isotope, it's really more an ecosystem thing. Uh, I think they're doing a great job on that. Like, I don't even have to reboot plugins or whatever. It, it really works super... Like, like iCloud stuff, like, you know, like the thing that we're used to in these in, in, in this day and age. It really, really works fluent li for that. Just as an analyzer, while you're working uh, on analog gear or, you know, with your own plugins and whatever, the value gets a little bit lower for the Isotope Audio Lens plugin. And for that, the true balance uh, might be better because that's more aimed... For what I can see, it's more aimed at, at those type of workflows. Uh, for instance, my workflow as well. Uh, I find spectral balance to be very important. It's it's one of the um, things where you can uh, judge quality for a mix or for a master, definitely for a master. What I always say is like, hey, if you have a whole playlist with songs in the same genre as that you are mastering and your master sounds dull or sounds sharp or has not enough low end or too much low end, Chances are that a listener 
is going to notice that. They're not going to notice the exact thing, but they're going to be a little bit annoyed. You want to blend in. You want to give a super equal experience to the listener. And plugins like these really help with that. I think I'm going to um, to use True Balance on my work system because I really want to dive into it a bit deeper. Uh, maybe I should do a video later if I have some extra thoughts on this. So yeah, both plugins sell for 100 euros. Uh, so it's really up to you to choose. Uh, I think both will have a free demo available. Uh, so yeah, check it out. I'll link to both Isotope and Sonable in the description down below. Now, here's a small teaser for you. Sonable hasn't just released True Balance. Sonable has also released True Level. I will post a video about that plugin in a few hours, I think. And otherwise tomorrow. So you will see that on YouTube when it's there. It's just a different plugin that I, that I want to tell a different story about. Now, if you like my videos and want to support me by becoming a member of the channel, you can do that on YouTube with the join button or on Patreon over here. And when subscribing to one of these two services, you get early access to videos, answers to questions, some other good stuff. Content is the same on both platforms. I'll link a playlist over here. Another way to support me is by watching more videos. So I'll link one, one of my videos, public videos over here so you can check out something else. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing and bye bye.